Oligarchy is a form of government where basically the government, it, it can still look like a democracy, you still hold elections and all that kind of stuff. But what the average person wants doesn't happen. Instead, what happens is what billionaires, what very rich people want, because they have either seized control of government indirectly by seizing control of the political process of the politicians themselves, or they have become the government. In this case, you know, having an oligarch as president, having oligarchs in the cabinet, uh, having oligarchs, uh, you know, uh, run the media, all that sort of thing. That's all oligarchy. And that's pretty much where America is at and has been for at least at least a decade, uh, I, I would argue a, a little longer than that. I mean, uh, how long has it been since, you know, there was, there was that era, there was that point in time from the 1930s until the 1980s where Americans regularly got what they wanted. You know, we, we got Social Security, we got the right to unionize, we got the minimum wage, we got unemployment insurance, we got Medicare, we got Medicaid, we got the Civil Rights Act, we got the Voting Rights Act. We got, you know, just all kinds of good stuff happened. You know, the Section 8 housing supports, uh, for relatively free colleges and universities, are very, very inexpensive. Um, top-notch, high-quality, brand-gleaming new schools, an interstate highway system, basically stuff that we wanted, we got. All that pretty much came to a halt in the mid-1980s. If you think back over the last 40 years, can you think of any major programs that have rolled out that reflect what people want? I mean, we're the only developed country in the world that has a half a million um, uh, medical bankruptcies a year. People would rather not have that happening here. It doesn't happen in other developed countries, but no, we, you know, we still have that. Uh, Obamacare, I think you could argue, is the only major program we got, and really that was a giant giveaway to giant health insurance companies. So, uh, you know, which is not to say it didn't help a lot of people, but it helped a lot of people in a way that really helped the oligarchs. So, you know, again, another symptom of oligarchy. So we've been in this oligarchy thing for at least a generation. And the thing about oligarchies is that they are often very unstable. Eventually what happens is people figure out that they've been screwed. And you see the cracks showing, you see, the, the, you see people figuring this out in the, in the presence, in the rise, in the, in the uh, increase in politicians and truth tellers within society pointing out that the average person is getting screwed and the rich are getting richer. In our case, I would say, you know, D Bernie Sanders uh, nearly taking the 2016 uh, Democratic nomination from Hillary Clinton had the Democratic Party itself not stepped in and intervened and said, no, no, wait a minute. Uh, you know, we, we already promised this to Hillary. Um, you know, had that not happened, you know, I, there's no doubt in my mind Bernie would have easily beat Donald Trump because they were both arguing the same thing, that it's time to overthrow the oligarchy, except that Donald Trump was an oligarch. And, you know, and many of his claims turned out to be complete BS. So anyhow, that was an early sign. So oligarchy, as I said, is unstable. At some point, the people figure out they've been screwed. And what do they do? They start rising up. They start saying, no, we want something different. And what that something different typically turns out to be is one of two things. Either people say, we want our democracy back, and they move back toward democracy. This is what happened in Brazil when uh, Jair Bol Bolsonaro was overthrown, excuse me, in a democratic election when, you know, Bolsonaro was kicked out and, and you know, is now being prosecuted. In fact, he fled to Mar-a-Lago, you'll recall. I mean, you know, oligarchs, no oligarchs, and kleptocrats or whatever you want to call them. So either a country returns to democracy. I think at some level you could argue this is what's happening in Mexico right now as well. Or the oligarchs say enough already. We're going to put down, you know, we're going to put down our foot. It's time for the uh, iron fist. Forget the velvet glove over it. And they start crushing dissent. And they start putting people in jail, and they start, you know, bankrupting the media, and they, you know, just all these things that, that you know, Viktor Orban has done, that Vladimir Putin has done, 
that uh, Duterte did in the Philippines, that Erdogan is doing in Turkey. Uh, you just see, the, you see this all over the world in countries that were formerly democracies moved into oligarchy and then when the oligarchs were challenged they became autocrats in response to those challenges. And so the question is which way is America going to go? And I think we'll probably know the answer to that question about more or less two years from right now. Because, you know, the next two years, Donald Trump is going to do his best, right? Presidents always get the most done in the first two years of their presidency. Um, really, the first year. Because by the second year, everybody in Congress is running for re-election. A third of the Senate and 100 percent of the House of Representatives running for re-election. And, you know, state houses all over the country and everything else. And so everybody's kind of scrambling and not a lot of, you know, new or innovative or amazing stuff gets done. So in two years, Americans will be able to look back and say, okay, this is what Trump did. This is what the GOP did. Do we like it or not? And if, if, whether Trump has gone full-on autocrat, authoritarian, or whether he's only gone partway, or whether you know, he's decided not to do that at all, which I, I you know, consider to be somewhere between unlikely and impossible, um, there will be an election in all probability. And that election is probably going to tell us what the future of America is going to be. So, you know, the bottom line here is while we still have the ability, while we still have the opportunity, it's important for us to, pre to prepare, to show up at your local Democratic Party meetings and, and volunteer to join up with groups like Indivisible, to get out there and get active. And you're... We'll be right back.